I already start, or Mr. Chairman? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I will, besides all the EV applications we um, just heard um, a couple of minutes ago, I will talk a little bit on battery storage and um, especially their stationary applications. Um, the agenda looks like, let me just briefly introduce a little bit um, what we are doing. I'm coming from Fraunhofer. Right? So I will briefly introduce a little bit what we are doing at our institute. So Fraunhofer ISE is a member of the Fraunhofer um, Society in Germany. Showing a little bit market developments and um, the main market segments. And then I also want to highlight um, some of the key factors um, we already heard about um, safety, reliability issues, and I will highlight some of them. So let me just um, start um, what we are doing. I'm coming from the Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems. We are working besides um, solar cells and solar thermal systems also on battery systems. And what you see on the left column um, is a technology which is um, suitable for stationary applications, just to highlight one um, with the message that um, today it's a lot about lithium ion, but not all, especially in stationary applications. We also see um, alternatives to lithium ion. And the middle and the right column definitely addresses um, batteries for electromobility applications, because um, those two technologies, silicon-based anodes as well as all solid-state approaches, allows us highest energy densities, allowing us highest cruising ranges. Then on a system level, we are working um, on battery system technology. So the question is, how do you get from single cells um, functional systems? We accompany our partners, and this is the middle column, in um, applied um, storage systems group, which means um, applications. Here, a quite nice example from Australia. And um, we are doing testing, electrical, thermal, as well as mechanical. So this is what um, we are doing at our institute. And now just um, let me uh, introduce a little bit um, what we see in market developments. And there you can see this is um, exponential growth for um, battery storage in various applications. And for sure, not all technologies fit best um, for all. So it's not one single technology which is um, um, the best solution for all those different applications. Um, if you look on these numbers, it looks quite impressive. If you look on the exponential growth rate for electromobility um, applications, it's even um, bigger. And um, there you can um, see that um, we are talking about huge markets. And the question is just a simple question. If you lead some iron manufacturer, are you willing to cover all these different applications and under which um, um, conditions? So, looking on the market segments for stationary applications, this is quite a um, nice um, overview from colleagues on the yes. I don't go into detail on all those um, different business cases, just to mention, even so, if there are certain business cases in principle possible, whether they are working in a country or not, this strongly depends on the regulatory framework. So, in Germany, I would say four of those 13 are working, the others do not work, because the regulatory framework is lacking behind the technology um, development. Now looking what's working, transmission level, this is what you can see here, the growth rate for primary control power applications, and obviously those systems are installed because they are competitive to um, conventional primary control power um, systems. Then uh, looking on the distribution level, distribution level is also working in um, Germany under certain um, 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 circumstances. Um, looking on a quite nice example which was realized, it's uh, called Smart District, or you can also call it with the password Smart Grid. There you can see it. this is a, um, a, a part of a village, um, new buildings, and all of them have PV. And instead of having a um, decentralized small storage systems, they integrated a central storage system, a district storage system, and this is uh, much more economical than the small um, battery systems per single family household. And we also have a CHP unit, heat pumps, and a thermal storage um, to provide electricity and heat um, decentralized. Now coming to a quite nice example, it's um, belonging to the topic sector coupling. So we are building actually in Freiburg, in my hometown, a new stadium for the football club. And um, the PV on the roof on, of this stadium 
the partially fed not only in the public grid, but also offering power together with a small battery power for the lightweight system. You can ask why they are doing this. Quite simple example, you can earn more money when you're selling the electricity of the PV system to the lightweight system than um, the actual feed-in tariff. So this is an um, economic motivated um, sector coupling, PV not only for the um, public grid, but also for um, transport applications here, in this case, the light rail system. Now coming to the customer level, customer level could be the small residential, single family household, PV battery system, but much more, also residential and commercial, and this is also a project which is under construction at the moment in my hometown, a tower, which is a mixed commercial and residential building, and this building gets a lot of PV on the facade, on the rooftop, and also battery storage. And this battery storage is used for self-sufficiency, for self-consumption in the building, but the battery can also support the grid, offering grid services to the grid. And for sure, it also helps then to um, leverage um, EV charging, um, um, what we can expect, um, what will happen in the near future, that the growth rates of the EVs, the market shares, will um, exponentially increase. So, next um, topic um, where we are also quite active in, in, in supporting um, projects in um, Southeast Asia um, is mini grids. Uh, mini grids, um, the higher the solar shares, for sure, the higher the capex, but the lower the, lower the opex over time, we can expect savings. So, the motivation here in existing or new design diesel mini grids is um, increasing PV plus battery is decreasing the levelized cost of electricity with today's PV and um, battery prices. This is doable. And here, an example from Nepal. You can see here the load curve. Um, we have the morning and the evening peak, and um, during um, the maximum sunshine hours, we have um, low consumption, and this is why you also can see in these curves um, there's a saturation um, in terms of fuel savings. Um, of course, the sun is not shining at night, um, and therefore, when we install a battery storage, we can uh, increase the fuel savings. On the other side, we have to consider the whole levelized cost of electricity, so pure economic consideration. And there you can see with the actual battery prices, a small battery is the economic optimi um, optimized choice, whereas with decreasing battery prices, the, the increase of the battery um, capacity, which is from an economic point of view doable, um, it's obvious, and what we can see is um, that battery prices are decreasing and decreasing. So the study was already one year old. So coming now to um, a quite nice example um, from Australia, square kilometer array radio astronomy, and they are going to the middle of nowhere because there they have the lowest distribution, uh, um, um, disturbances, sorry, and for sure there is then also not a public grid, and um, what we did here is the calculation in the me megawatt and megawatt hour um, range, PV plus battery supporting, and you can see here the levelized cost of electricity even under such boundary conditions is only at 30 euro cent per kilowatt hour. For sure, those prices also will decrease in the near future when you design such a project. Um, today, they would be even lower because PV um, prices dropped and also battery prices um, dropped. Now coming um, to the key factors um, when we are considering such projects, and um, we are not discussing only from a technical point of view, from an economic point of view, but we also have to consider and convince the banking as well as also um, the, the insurance sector, and they are quite conservative at the moment in supporting storage projects because there's a lack, lack of long-term experience and there's also um, some risks um, which have to be um, reduced. Now, looking on what we developed here in terms of quality assurance, for sure we have to look on safety. Safety is not only a single component, not only the single cell, it's the whole system, and it's also functional safety. Then we have to talk about reliability. Reliability, again, on a component and system level, but we also have to consider operating conditions. It's a huge difference whether we have a battery system in an air-conditioned operating control room or if we have a battery in a container outside next to a PV park where we see um, 40 degrees Celsius and a lot of direct irradiation, much higher effort in terms of cooling. And then performance. Performance means the system efficiency, but at the end of the day, the question is to which degree 
um, is really the system satisfying the user needs and here we are talking about effectiveness. I have some examples um, later on for this. And for sure all of those um, factors are influenced by aging, by aging of the single components, especially by aging of the um, battery cells. So, and now I'm coming to some um, um, points. Safety in Germany, it was developed a VDE application rule which targets the component, the cell, the system and also functional safety. This is now an application rule. It took a long time until um, all the stakeholders accepted um, this, um, this application rule and um, a lot of discussions but luckily now this is in place and could be um, translated also to a lot of different applications um, not only for the um, small PV um, home storage devices. Coming to reliability and we already discussed or heard about low quality um, cells which could come um, to India and also to other countries and here I, I have an example of a high quality product so little loss of capacity after 1400 cycles, little um, loss of efficiency after 1400 cycles. This is a good system and also an almost homogeneous aging behavior. If you look on the data, which we do not have the time now, but I guess um, the slides will be shared later on. And you also can ask me about the details about um, these results. Coming now to a product which is not performing that well. So huge loss of capacity after 1400 cycles in Germany you would need in home storage 200 equivalent full cycles a year after seven years you would see such results with this low quality system and also huge loss of, of efficiency after, 400, after 1400 cycles and a really inhomogeneous aging behavior and the big question is a question not only in terms of performance but especially a question on ter in terms of reliability. Can the cooling system really cope with this increased heat generation. So the heat generation increased by a factor of three if you look on these um, numbers for the different modules. And if not, then the system has to shut down. Otherwise, we are coming into critical problems and critical problems with lead some ion battery systems. If you go to the internet, this means burning batteries. Okay, coming now to efficiencies and here we, we tested um, four market available systems and it's clear you have to consider the different um, 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 steps from PV to storage, from storage to the device and for sure all of those conversion steps do not provide an efficiency of 100% so we have system losses but at the end of the day what counts more is the question of effectiveness so again the question to which degree the system really satisfies the user needs and there we have to consider uh, besides efficiencies also the settling times and um, we did different investigations keeping solar um, production constant varying the load and you can see here good systems are reacting within a couple of seconds and bad systems are reacting up to a minute and the same we can do when we are changing um, the load, um, changing the solar irradiation, the PV production and keeping the load constant and again here good systems react in a short period of time, um, bad systems need up to a minute or even more and what does this mean in Germany for example you feed in at the wrong time for 11 cent feed in tariff, you're purchasing at the wrong time electricity from the grid for 30 cent so each single time delay means 20 cent loss per kilowatt hour and this can destroy complete your investment. So, and this is why we have to take care for this topic effectiveness besides um, efficiencies. Now coming to um, one of my last slides and we did here a study again for the smart district Weinsberg and besides um, that aging is affecting safety and reliability, aging is also affecting the economics for sure. Um, here result in terms of how is the self-sufficiency changing over time. We have PV degradation but we also have battery degradation and this means over time the self-sufficiency is decreasing and decreasing. In your self-consumption case, in your business case self-consumption, you're, you're buying a PV plus battery system to reduce the electricity bill. What's happening year by year the electricity bill is increasing again because your self-sufficiency is decreasing you're storing less electricity in your battery because the battery is not performing that good anymore as, as, it, as it has performed at, um, when, you, when you bought the system. And again, here um, such behaviors can destroy the economics and this is why it's so important to consider um, the aging effects on safety, reliability, but also um, on, the, on this um, issue in terms of performance and effectiveness. 
With this, I would like to conclude um, large-scale integration of fluctuating renewables in power supply systems requires storage from a technical point of view because we have fluctuating generation, so we need a device which is able to balance. But, and in Germany, we get rid of the feed-in tariff very soon, I'm quite convinced. So new business models will come up and new business models for renewable power supply systems need storage then um, we have um, um, those um, issues addressed and we can um, have several um, business cases, again, when the regulatory framework is also adapted. And what we see is a huge market growth for battery storage expected, but to say it clearly, the growth rates for stationary replications are not in the same order of magnitude than we expected for the EVs. And again, the question is, does uh, stationary applications have access for high quality battery cells when the automotive industry is sourcing in completely different orders of magnitude? And this would be also a chance for alternative battery technologies, by the way. Quality assurance has to address the topics which I already mentioned, safety, reliability, performance, and always it has to be considered aging, and therefore aging models are in place. We can predict aging behavior of different technologies in a single different um, applications. And then, very important, and this is why the um, financing as well as the insurance sector is so conservative in going into battery projects. There's no long-term experience with new cell technologies available, unfortunately, at the moment. We have to gain those experience over time. The only long-term experience is stationary applications, which everybody who is involved in the storage industry can provide is um, experience with lead, with lead acid batteries. And therefore, it's key, appropriate quality, measure, quality assurance measures helping us to um, reduce the risks and then when all this homework is properly done, the very important financing and insurance sector come into the play, hopefully in the near future. And with this, I would like um, to conclude and thanks for your attention and I guess questions are later on after the session. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir not only for the um, small PV um, home storage devices. Coming to reliability, and we already discussed or heard about low quality um, cells which could come um, to India and also to other countries. And here I, I have an example of a high quality product. So little loss of capacity after 1400 cycles, little um, loss of efficiency after 1400 cycles. This is a good system and also an almost homogeneous aging behavior. If you look on the data, which we do not have the time now, but I guess um, the slides will be shared later on. And you also can ask me about the details about um, these results. Coming now to a product which is not performing that well. So huge loss of capacity after 1,400 cycles. In Germany, you would need in home storage 200 equivalent full cycles a year. After seven years, you would see such results with this low quality system and also huge loss of, of efficiency after, 400, after 1,400 cycles and a really inhomogeneous aging behavior. And the big question is a question not only in terms of performance, but especially a question on ter in terms of reliability. Can the cooling system really cope with this increase heat generation. So the heat generation increased by a factor of three if you look on these um, numbers for the different modules. And if not, then the system has to shut down. Otherwise, we are coming into critical problems and critical problems with lithium ion battery systems. If you go to the internet, this means burning batteries. Okay, coming now to efficiencies. And here we, we tested um, four market available systems. And it's clear you have to consider the different um, 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 steps from PV to storage, from storage to the device, and for sure all of these conversion steps do not provide an efficiency of 100%, so we have system losses. But at the end of the day, what counts more is the question of effectiveness. So again, the question to which degree the system really satisfies the user needs. And there we have to consider, uh, besides efficiencies, also the settling times. And um, we did different investigations, keeping solar um, production constant, varying the load. And you can see here, good systems are reacting within a couple of seconds and bad systems are reacting up to a minute. And the same we can do when we are changing um, the load, um, changing the solar irradiation, the PV production and keeping the load constant. And again here, good systems react in a short period of time. Um, bad systems need up to a minute or even more. 
And what does this mean in Germany? For example, you feed in at the wrong time for 11 cent feed-in tariff. You're purchasing at the wrong time electricity from the grid for 30 cent. So each single time delay means 20 cent loss per kilowatt hour, and this can destroy complete your investment. So, and this is why we have to take care for this topic effectiveness besides um, efficiencies. Now coming to um, one of my last slides, and we did here a study again for the smart district Weinsberg, and besides um, that aging is affecting safety and reliability, aging is also affecting the economics for sure. Um, here result in terms of how is the self-sufficiency changing over time. We have PV degradation, but we also have battery degradation, and this means over time the self-sufficiency is decreasing and decreasing. In your self-consumption case, in your business case self-consumption, you're, you're buying a PV plus battery system to reduce the electricity bill. What's happening year by year, the electricity bill is increasing again because your self-sufficiency is decreasing. You're storing less electricity in your battery because the battery is not performing that good anymore as, as, it, as it has performed at, um, when, you, when you bought the system. And again, here, um, such behaviors can destroyed economics, and this is why it's so important to consider um, the aging effects on safety, reliability, but also um, on, the, on this um, issue in terms of performance and effectiveness. With this, I would like to conclude. Um, Large-scale integration of fluctuating renewables in power supply systems require storage from a technical point of view, because we have fluctuating generation, so we need a device which is able to balance, but and in Germany, we get rid of the feed-in tariff very soon, I'm quite convinced. So new business models will come up, and new business models for renewable power supply systems need storage. Then um, we have um, um, those um, issues addressed, and we can um, have several um, business cases, again, when the regulatory framework is also adapted. And what we see is a huge market growth for battery storage expected, but to say it clearly, the growth rates for stationary replications are not in the same order of magnitude than we expected for the EVs. And again, the question is, does stationary applications have access for high quality battery cells when the automotive industry is sourcing in completely different orders of magnitude? And this would be also a chance for alternative battery technologies, by the way. Quality assurance has to address the topics which I already mentioned, safety, reliability, performance, and obviously it has to be considered aging, and therefore aging models are in place. We can predict aging behavior of different technologies in a single different um, applications. And then, very important, and this is why the um, financing as well as the insurance sector is so conservative in going into battery projects. There's no long-term experience with new cell technologies available, unfortunately, at the moment. We have to gain those experience over time. The only long-term experience is stationary applications, which everybody who is involved in the storage industry can provide is um, experience with lead, with lead acid batteries. And therefore, it's key, appropriate quality, measure, quality assurance measures helping us to um, reduce the risks and then when all this homework is properly done, the very important financing and insurance sector come into the play, hopefully in the near future. And with this, I would like um, to conclude, and thanks for your attention, and I guess questions are later on after this session. Thank you very much.